general relativity step by step. So what did I do last time? Last time I decomposed the vector and uh, decomposed the vector into its basis components here and I had this nice little picture with the different colored coordinates, different colored um, coordinate systems. And I ended up with this little rule here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write it in a slightly different way. I'm going to say we've got one, two, three components. So I'm just going to write Vj bar equals sigma over i vi di x bar j by di x i j equals 1, 2 and 3 so to get j equals 1 I'm looking at the first equation to get j equals 2 I'm looking at the second equation and to get j equals 3 I'm looking at the third equation so there it is, there's my transformation law now what I want to do is to go back to the gradient transformation law, which was up here somewhere. Quite a long way back. Oh, there it is. There it is. GI. I wish I could cut and paste, and I don't seem to be able to do that. GI equals sigma J. So GI equals sigma over J, DJ bar. Let's write that down here. You'll notice that, well, there's quite a lot going on here g j bar and then what was the what was the um matrix multiplication bit what was the fraction bit it's di x bar j di x i di x bar j di x bar j by di x i and what I want to do is to compare these two guys, and there's quite a lot of work I've got to, well not a lot of work, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to massage this by, by notational changes to make this thing here look like this. Remember that was the gradient, components of a gradient transform, components of a gradient, and uh, transformation. And you'll remember that these transformed in the same way that the basis vectors transformed. I can just write it out, but with the ej's instead of g. G's di x bar j by di x i. Okay, so how am I, what am I going to do to this? What are the differences between the two? Well, you'll notice the first difference is I've written this as a subscript and that as a superscript for reasons that will become clear later. So I'm just going to swap i goes to j and j goes to i. These are just squiggles on a bit of paper. I can call them what I like. So this rule here, every time I see a j, I'm just going to write an i down. That's sum over i, so this is sum over j. v, that's an i, so that's a j. That's a di x bar j, so it's a di x bar i. And this is a di x j. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bar, I'm going to remove the bar, and I'm going to put one in where there isn't one. So all I'm doing is changing my notation so that whenever I see a bar, I'm going to say, oh, I meant, I'm going to call it, instead of vi bar, I'm just going to call it vi. Sigma over j, v, j, there's no bar there, so I'll put one in. Di x, there's no, there is a bar there, so there's going to be one missing from here. And that is going to be a bar j. And now, what I've done, by dint of changing i and j, and by changing my notation for which coordinate system I put the bar over, I can do that. I, all it is is a notational change. There's no physics there. No maths even. I'm just going to write down g i equals sigma over j. I'm just copying this one here. g j bar di x bar j by di x i. And I'm going to write down this again. Didn't there to write it out again. Di x bar j by di x i. So this one's the gradient. And this one's the vector transformation, or the components of a vector. And you'll see that these these change in the same the components of the gradient here, this 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 rule here, it's the same transformation as the coordinate bases. So you call that a covariant, co meaning with, as opposed to this one, which is called a contravariant. 
contra meaning against. If you write this out as a matrix and interpret it, well, no, it's not interpreted, it is the Jacobian matrix, you'll see that these, this Jacobian matrix is actually the inverse, it's not quite the inverse, it's the transpose of the inverse of this Jacobian matrix here. Because this one's got the X bar on the bottom and this one's got the X bar on the top. So they, it's the other way around. It's the uh, in, back in screencast one, or it might have been screencast two. Uh, I talked about the Jacobian of the forward and the Jacobian of the backward transformation, and they were matrix inverses of one another. Here, it's not quite right because we've got a transpose to worry about as well. So I'm using language loosely. Some, it's not quite a contravariant vector. It's contravariant components. There's different ways of expressing it, and whichever way you say it, somebody will say, I've got it wrong. So I'll just talk about this as a contravariant vector, and this as a covariant vector. Well, it, it's, it, well, there's different ways of expressing it. Some people say it's a covariant tensor, and so forth. And some people say it's, a, it's, it's, it's the covariant components of it. Oh, well, anyway, there's different ways to talk about it. As long as you remember, this is covariant transformation, and this is contravariant transformation. That's what I'm trying to get. I'm going to stop there. Covariant and contravariant. Uh, yeah, actually, um, yeah, I've written this as a, I've been a bit coy about it so far, but I've written this as a superscript and this one as a subscript, and I'll explain why in the next screencast. Stop there.